Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for this opportunity once again to share the, the bread of life, the word of God with the people of God. Lord, open our eyes, open our hearts that we might receive whatever you have for us. Not necessarily what this preacher says, but what you have for us through the agency, the power of the Holy Spirit. May it be so. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people said, Amen. Okay. Uh, you know, when you read the book of Acts especially, uh, you see, you see, you could call it the adventures of the great apostle Paul. I mean, Paul went from place to place. First he started with, uh, with his partner Barnabas, the son of consolation. They say that's what his name meant. And of course, he was also, uh, I think in the 14th chapter of Acts, he's also, that's when they're both called apostles. And then finally they divided and uh, Paul had Timothy. And uh, at other times he was uh, with this man uh, called uh, Silas, the prophet. He's called the prophet of God. So you have these men of God called to very high offices. Strong anointing. The power of God was working uh, through these men. The Holy Spirit was working with them through signs and wonders. And uh, God used Paul primarily to establish churches wherever he went. And, and, and you read about it just place to place. And it took a long time to get it uh, to these different places because they had a walk. They didn't even have horses much. It was mostly donkey. It was, it was mostly uh, either the very rich or the military that had the horses. And the roads were such that uh, everything would take a long time. And, and uh, so they would walk. They could only do it by day. And they were always on the move and they were preaching. And they were doing so many wonderful things, things, establishing churches where the name of Jesus had never been heard and God working with them. So we read that and we say, wow, I know I do. I just say, look at these, look at the work that these guys did. I mean, how blessed they were. And they were blessed. And God had to anoint them with that kind of power or they wouldn't have gotten anywhere. That's what we need today. There's so many arguments in our nation because uh, just in the church, so many different opinions, and, and uh, there's so many different religions in this nation now. But if somebody would come along with a Bible, and all of a sudden they're healing cancer, they're casting out demons, if they would have the accompanying signs that these men of God had in the Bible, then people would really listen. That's what's missing in the church today. And we call that revival. Uh, so many of our spiritual leaders, denominational leaders, are waiting for a move of God, a spiritual awakening, if you will. Uh, uh, that's what we need. The power of God. Con when people see the power of God and, and, and they find out that these things are real. Mama got healed. The cancer really disappeared. The doctors verified it. When they see all of these different things happen, that won't save anybody, but it gets their attention. So then when the message comes after the miracle, they're listening. Because that person has to be a, of God because look what, look what they were able to do in the name of Jesus. So then they'll listen. That's what was happening. And that's why they had so much success. Why did Jesus have so much success in his earthly ministry? He said to some of the doubters, if you don't believe me, believe me for the work's sake. <laughs> right? The blinded eyes are open, the lepers are healed, the dead are raised. What more proof do you need? So those signs and wonders, they were testing uh, that the word being preached is from God. So once again, getting back to Paul and Silas, doing so many things. And yet, while they were doing all these things, they oftentimes ex experience hardship. And I mean suffering. And sometimes extreme hardship and suffering when they're doing the will of God. And that sometimes that happens to us. We're in the will of God. You know, sometimes bad stuff happens to us because we've been acting bad. Well, by bad, I don't mean that you're out there robbing banks. Maybe some of you are. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. But, you know, sometimes we're missing God. We, 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 can, we can disobey or, or something. And, you know, everything's con about sowing and reaping. So then, uh, you know, if you say certain things in a certain place, you shouldn't have said they can get you in trouble. Then don't complain when the trouble comes, right? 
If you're not listening to what the boss says, don't, don't be surprised when the boss has you in the office and says some stuff to you and different things like that. But we understand that. But sometimes when we're doing good and doing good and doing good, we could get into trouble. Trouble comes, suffering comes, hardship comes. So that happened to these great men of God. And today I want to look at one of those times where, where uh, the apostle, the great apostle Paul and this prophet, his, his, uh, his mate, uh, was with him, Barnabas, and how did they react when hardship and trouble came their way, when hardship and suffering came their way? So I want to look at that. So as a text, uh, would you go with me to the book of Acts, please, uh, chapter 16. They're going to also put it on the screen for you, but if you have a Bible, go ahead and open up to it, to the book of Acts, uh, chapter 16. And I want to read uh, 11 verses for you. Starting at uh, verse 16, chapter 16, verse 16, and I'm going to read through verse 26, okay? Acts 16, 16. Now it happened, Paul, this is concerning Paul and Silas, as we went to prayer, that a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met us, who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us. So, and cried out saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of the Lord. I mean, so that's a demon spirit, fortune telling. If you've ever known some people that have gone and gotten words, you know, there, there's some fortune tellers out there that they, they don't know how to fortune anything except put some fortune in their money, in their pocketbook, you know, with the money. But then there's the real. There, there is demonic power, and some people can predict your past. And I knew a, a fellow like that when I worked at Lucky Stores years ago. And, uh, and, and what became when he destroyed his life? Because that fortune teller told him some things about his past, so he believed that was from God, and then told him some things that he had to do for the future. And the devil doesn't know the future. Only God knows the future. But uh, these fortune tellers, so through fortune telling uh, these guys that she was a slave girl, they were making money, making all kinds of money. When supernaturally, uh, people would find out things about their, oh, wow, that must be God. Fortune telling was big enough. A lot of different religions were big. You go to different parts of the world, we hear from missionaries, especially sometimes from evangelists, uh, uh, the practice of voodoo, all these kinds of things, fortune telling. It's real. I used to know a guy. He happened to be from the nation of Indonesia, and he grew up there. And uh, he was an American uh, now, but he says when he grew up there, there was a lot of that going on. And he said, I, I used to think it was real. But then I came uh, to America, and over the years, I found out that's just superstition. You know, I, I wanted to tell them there's more devils in America than over in Indonesia than where you were. Come on, just that we got sophisticated demons in this in this country. That's all it is. But they got we got them all we got them all over the place here too. So he got to the to the place where where he just thought well all that was superstition, but it wasn't. It takes place, and there are places in the United States, New York. There are places in New York where some of the people that have come out of the Caribbean islands, okay. Uh, practice some of that stuff and uh, the, the pins and the dolls and all that stuff is real it works there's demonic power behind it okay so uh, that what that's what was going on and these guys were making a lot of money off of this young slave girl because of the fortune telling ability that she had because of, of that demon so try 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 to see that and uh, what verse was I up to? Let's see. Verse 17. Thus this girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, as I read, who proclaim to us the way of the Lord. And this she did for how many days? Many, many days. So this was going on wherever Paul was going. Where, where, you know, I guess this gal with her, with her owners would follow them at times, I'm sure. I'm sure she wasn't a caboose all day long, but uh, every day she, she made a point. Uh, I guess they wanted, Satan wanted to discredit these apostles. Ah, we know who they are and so forth. And she did this for many days. We don't know how many, but it says many days. So anyway, a number of days. 
And uh, Paul hadn't done anything for many days. Why did Paul just rebuke her in the name of Jesus? He didn't do anything for many days. He had put up with it. You know, and sometimes you could be the most anointed person on earth. And I, I don't read about anybody except Moses that was more anointed than the Apostle Paul. And he couldn't do anything either. He had to put up with it. Silas had to put up with it. And whoever else may have been there as part of the evangelistic team, we don't know. But this happened for many days. So verse 18 and this she did for many days, but Paul, greatly annoyed, I, I put in my Bible, not in my Bible, in my mind in parentheses, finally, and that's what it's trying to say, he finally, but Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, not to the girl, he bypassed the girl, looked at her, but he spoke to the spirit controlling her, and he said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her, and he, that spirit, came out of her that very hour. When the Bible says that very hour, it means right away, immediately. So he turned to the Spirit. And people ask, well, uh, most people that I talk to don't understand that this was going on for many days. Why did Paul do it all of a sudden? Because he had to wait on the Holy Spirit's direction. Just because you're anointed with God's power doesn't mean you can just use it when you want. You don't have to wait on the leading of the Spirit. I've talked to uh, some guys that have had healing ministries, strong healing ministries, and different things. And yes, a lot of times you have to wait till the Spirit leads you, till He moves. And casting out demons is different from just binding a demon. Casting out demons takes supernatural power. And not every believer is, an, and this might get me in trouble, but it's true. I'm an old guy now. I know what I'm talking. I've seen a lot. I've read a lot. I've talked to people that have been there. Casting out a demon requires, it's, 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 it's one of the things like the gifts of healing like the word of knowledge, word of wisdom. It's something that God has to give you the power to do. You can bind stuff. You can, uh, demons that are coming against you, maybe a loved one over whom you have authority. But to cast them out requires the power of God in manifestation at the moment. That's why Paul couldn't do anything. Anyway, I just thought I'd throw that out there for free. Some years ago, I didn't know that. I was taught, well, you can just cast them out, but uh, seeking God in prayer, it's been years now, but, but you learn, and that helps a lot. Sometimes you just need to bind a demon. If the Holy Spirit wants you to cast, wants you to cast some demon out, you can, okay, you can. And you, you get into the area of, what, of what, what people call the gifts of the Spirit. It's really the manifestations of the Spirit in the Bible. So anyway, getting back to this... Uh, I command you in the name of Jesus, come out of her. And he came out that very hour. But, there's always a but. But when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, uh, you can imagine what they saw. This demon might have, might have convulsed her. I don't know what happened. So they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. And the authorities were people that were put in place, civil leaders put in place by the, by the Roman government. government. This was a Roman province. Okay, so they, they brought him to them. Maybe it was the police, local police station. We don't know what, what, what kind of civil authority it was, but they had authority. They brought them to them at verse 20, and they said, These men being Jews, and at, at the way it's used here, it was meant in a derogatory way, exceedingly trouble our city. They're mad at these boys, these, these Jewish boys. And they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. And actually, Judaism was a legal religion in the Roman government. They were just preaching a, full, a type of, of Judaism now that included Jesus. Okay, So that's only half truth, what it says there. Verse 22, then the multitude, they got the multitude all gathered up. They gathered together against them. And the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods, to be beaten, to be flogged, okay? Uh, the King James and some of the other Bibles uh, don't use the word rods, but in the next verse you can see they were flogged. And they had laid many stripes on, on them, okay, whipping them. And that was torturous. That was painful. The kind of whips, it wasn't the cat of nine tails like what they used on Jesus, most probably, but it was a very painful uh, painful whips. They, they would usually put beads or something in them, lead beads them, so when they hit, they really hurt. They did some damage. And when they had laid, my Bible says, many stripes on them. 
I don't know about you, but I might have been screaming, ah! They probably took it like a man, huh? They laid many stripes on them. They threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. I mean, that's a strong command. Uh, they didn't always tell the jailer to keep people securely. Uh, that really is saying, if they need fur, is that Daniel I see back there? Ah, Daniel, good to see you. He's always busy Sundays all week uh, taking care of the city of Fullerton. Yeah. Praise God. They, they, they set him free and let him visit the church. <laughs> He's an important part of this church, by the way. Okay, so the jailer had a charge from these to be, in other words, they're saying, do whatever else you want done to these guys. That's what, that's what uh, is, is being inferred here when you study it and you look at it more carefully, okay? So verse 24 says, having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. So he put them to the lowest dungeon and he put them in stocks. And some of the stocks that they used in those days is you lie down on the ground and they put your feet separated, your legs separated, and then they put them in stocks and they like, they, they like you there.